well here we are y'all so this is the memorial for the buddy holly crash site uh i believe the actual crash site itself is farther down the the path here and i think you can walk down there i don't know if there's anything down at that spot but you can see they've got his iconic glasses set up here and this has all been tagged up it looked kind of neat people have left some mementos they've left some of their own glasses and other memorabilia and somebody has left a marker so that you can sign it so i think i should probably sign it just to say i was here uh and it is this is in iowa 315th street and goal ave and some folks have put stickers on that as well So a little bit of history on Buddy Holly. Charles Hardin Holly uh, was his real name, but he was known as Buddy Holly. He was an American singer and songwriter who was a central and pioneering figure of the mid-1950s rock and roll. He was born in Lubbock, Texas to a musical family during the Great Depression and learned to play guitar and sing alongside his siblings. The plane crash here happened in February 3rd of 1959. And he sang a lot of cool songs like, uh, gosh, uh, off the top of my head, I would see uh, The Day That I Die. He sang that one. That'll be the day that I die. Ooh. I wonder if at one point there was some signage right here or something. We'll go ahead and write our name on here. There we go. Crazy. So the the glasses here are neat, but I believe down this path they actually have like a kind of like a headstone type marker down here. So we're gonna walk down to where the actual crash site is, which is probably like a quarter mile, half mile down here in this cornfield, and. The clouds are starting to look like it could rain this evening, so I'll have to check the forecast, but the corn's looking good here, guys, in Iowa. Uh, I mean, I'm six foot tall, so it's getting ready. And here we are. And it's got uh, memorabilia for the other people that were killed in the crash. Uh, it's really neat that the family that owns the property here allows this to maintain its space here. And I don't know if this is marking the actual crash site or something, but it's been tagged up. I'm not sure what the pole is for. But yeah, that's, that's the crash site. Uh, people have left some guitar picks back here. I'm gonna snap some pictures of this and get headed back down this uh, path here and I'll see you guys at the truck. It's a little warm out there. I broke a sweat doing that. Since my AC 
you going? All right, so it's like six o'clock in the evening at this point, uh, but I think there's a pretty cool campsite that's not too far away that I have marked on here somewhere, 19 minutes away. So I'm gonna head over there. And 15th Street toward Gull Avenue, then turn left onto Gull Avenue. And uh, see what we can find for a campsite tonight. So let's do this. Better pick you guys up, or I'm gonna lose you. Yeah, come check it out. Turn left onto Gull Avenue. Continue on Gull Avenue for half a mile. made it to the park. <laughs> I'm at like belly button level with this thing so I need to grab my steps tool out of here quickly. Oh, Evo. Get that set up. And we're gonna hang out. This is a, it's a really nice park. There are a bunch of electrical sites over there and there are quite a few people here tonight, but uh, I'm gonna have to take a look because I think it's a pretty big park, but I think there's an observation tower on the other side of the park that we'll have to go check out in the morning. But uh, for now, I think it's beer o'clock. Um, I'll probably get a fire going, but I'm gonna wait an hour or so before we get to doing that. So. Alright y'all, well I picked up some local Iowa brews here. So this was brewed and canned by Big Grove Brewery in Iowa City, Iowa. It is called Easy Eddie. It's a IPA so it might make me sneeze. Uh, what does it say on here? Uh, Easy Eddie, a juicical tropical flavor of pineapple and mango are complemented by a round body and soft bitterness. This double dry hopped hazy IPA is infinitely drinkable and relentlessly flavorful. Eh, we'll give it a shot. I'm not a huge IPA guy, but I didn't want to make the mistake of buying another tomato beer today. sneeze. IPAs and chocolate do it to me all the time. That's beautiful. The, the, the clouds have come in and covered up the sun. It honestly looks like it might rain a little bit. I should probably check the forecast. So it's currently 72 degrees. It's beautiful. And we have a low of 54 here tonight. That's going to be amazing. It's going to feel great in the rig. Uh, yeah. And there might be rain on the way. 40% uh, at 8 p.m. and at 11 p.m. 63% and it's 724 right now. So we might not actually have an opportunity for a fire tonight. Let's see what the radar shows. And it might not be too... oh yeah we'll see. It could easily miss us but let's see if you can see what's going on there. So, who knows what's going to happen. I'm going to wait, since it says it could rain at 8 o'clock, which is only a half an hour away. I'm not going to try to start a fire quite yet, but 
we'll see how this turns out. If it's a light sprinkle, I, I won't be too terribly bothered by it because it's beautiful out here right now. It's very calm, it's cool, there's no sun. Uh, it's nice that it's not super humid and hot like it has been for the last few weeks. But the beer is good, the beer is good. Might as well grab my chair and hang out. Well, the rain came on a little faster than I expected. Oh, and it's dripping in here. Right off my window. All right. So I'm just gonna go, oh, I must have left this thing on all night. Sweet, battery's gonna need charged in this. If I sit here and watch movies half the night. Uh, I'm gonna watch a movie on Netflix called Contagion. Let's see what this is about. So it's a 2011 movie uh, when Beth Emhoff, played by Gwyneth Paltrow, returns to Minnesota from a Hong Kong business trip. She attributes the malaise, the malaise she feels, to jet lag. However, two days later, Beth is dead, and doctors tell her shocked husband, played by Matt Damon, that they have no idea what killed her. Soon, many others start to exhibit the same symptoms, and a global pandemic explodes. Doctors try to contain the lethal microbe, but society begins to collapse as a blogger, played by Jude Law, fans the flames of paranoia. And this came out in 2011. Uh, and we'll check this out. Kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? Turn that down so I can still hear the rain on the roof a little bit while I'm laying here. And we'll see if this passes. See if we can get a fire started. Did it stop raining? Oh no. Still raining. I'm under a few trees out here. It's still raining out there, but it's time to make something to eat.
We've got smoked Gouda. We've got leftover alligator. And tonight we're gonna do something similar to what I've done before. I have some red beans and rice that we're gonna cook up. I've got some tortillas. I've got some Herdez Taquiera street sauce, verde sauce here. And we are gonna use this sweet chili ramen bowl. Noodle bowl, I guess. And maybe some of these tater chips. We'll see. But I think I need to get the red beans and rice going first because they're going to take a while. And I'm going to put this alligator in with the red beans and rice here. movie was good uh, it's a little a little weird how how a movie that was that old is fits the timelines like fits everything so perfectly it's kind of odd but make your own assumptions I suppose how much water do we need three and three quarter cups how much does this make I don't know I'm feeling this is gonna make way more than I need. If that's gonna fit in there. This says I have to cook it for 20 to 30 minutes. So we'll see how this goes. I don't know if I even have 30 minutes of juice left in that bottle. I've got another bottle with me though. We'll go ahead and put this guy on there just because. I don't want to knock this thing over. So, this is just a solid hunk of gator. And it's been smoked, so I should just be able to eat a piece of it, I would think, but we're just gonna pick some of this meat off here, if we can. And uh, put it in the, put it in the beans, beans and rice. You guys missed the alligator episode I'll link that down below but definitely a little a little bit tougher now but still just as good I have overestimated or underestimated the size of this bag of rice here. We're going to bring that to a boil. 
with our gator in there. And, uh, let it simmer for a while because it's going to take a bit. All right. 30 minutes later, I think this is kind of ready, but I should have probably just cooked this in a, my pan because I still need to boil water for ramen. So I'm gonna have to dump it in there anyways. Just barely. All right. Now that that's nice and dirty in there, I'm making a mess in here, y'all, <laughs> as usual. I don't even know how much water I need for this. Quarter cup. We're gonna have some left over with that, probably. But I can kind of rinse out my jet boil with it. I'll give this a bit of a try to get some of that junk off of the sides in there Oop, not spill it everywhere yeah it's definitely not ramen noodles Oop. that boiled over fast for being not much water. Wasn't paying attention. Wow. Wasn't even that much water in there. Yeah, I got that real dirty. I'm gonna have to wash it in the house. It's the first time I've cooked in that thing. Probably was not a good idea. first do we put tater chips on there I think we have to so these are Larry the cable guy tater chips cheddar and sour cream so we have cheddar and sour cream chicks chips red beans and rice chili noodle bowl to be a combination here so it says these flavors will knock out your snack cravings like a cap kicking down a trailer door Shoot, they are so good. Save yourself the trouble and grab a second, third, and fourth bag now. I cooked up these flavors just for you. Now what in the world are you waiting for? Get her done. So yeah. Larry the Cable Guy Cheddar and Sour Cream Tater Chips. And each purchase supports Larry the Cable Guy's Get Her Done Foundation. The foundation's mission is highly dedicated to helping children and veterans one cause at a time through organizations supporting our focus area. We'll use some of them. Why not? Big tater chips. We'll put down a few of those. Crush them up a little bit. I think we'll go 
red beans and rice with crab meat, crab, alligator meat. Tripping. And then we'll get some noodles on there. Come on, noodles. You can do it. There we go. This is going to be incredibly sloppy. And on top of that, we're going to put some of the Verde street sauce. I imagine there's a seal in here, maybe. Yep. Ooh, that's so spicy. This is probably going to be really spicy. With that chili, chili sauce on that, those noodles, I bet it's spicy. It's a kind of a runny sauce. A little bit on there. Let's give this sucker a whirl. See how much of it I managed to spill. Not too shabby. Good stuff. Oh, I forgot the smoked Gouda. Definitely got to put some of that on there. We'll have another one, but we need a bit of cheese on it. What's a burrito without some cheese? There we go. Toss a couple hunks on there. Almost forgot the cheese. We'll have another one though. Ooh, should have got bigger tortillas. Cheese definitely adds a nice touch to that. That's good. It also stopped raining. Uh, so I popped the windows open. That happened during the half an hour it took to, took to cook the red beans and rice. I'm going to have a lot of leftovers, but that's okay. We're definitely going in for seconds. gator mm. oh that was cheese <laughs> I should not have made all of that yeah y'all I cooked entirely too much food uh, I could have used like a quarter of the packet of red beans and rice and had more than enough uh, I definitely didn't need to use that whole thing so I got to get this stuff tossed in a plastic bag and throw it in the cooler and then I'll get back to you. All right, y'all, I got all my junk relatively cleaned up. I'm going to have to take that jet boil in and wash it out real good in those pots and pans. That beans and rice made it pretty sticky in there, but that's okay. Oh, oh I'm going to get added to bed, y'all. I try to get myself up pretty early and we'll go check out that observation tower. Alright. I'll see you in the morning. Can't the weather just be like this all the time? In the summer, anyways. Oh, it's 8.30. I think it's time to get going. We'll head over to the other side of the park, see if we can find this tower. Uh, all right.
gorgeous morning. Gorgeous morning out here. Oh, I can't even reach that. Oh, there we go. Well, nice campsite that I didn't really get to use. Oh, I forgot I have those levelers under there. I'm gonna have to take those out. You stay right there. They are full of mud though. Okay, now we can go to the other side of the park. Gotta slam all the doors. the elevation of the park or the elevation total of the tower I highly doubt it's that tall because I can't see it but it was constructed in 1934 not a bad way to start your morning though no coffee roll out of bed and go walk up a hill Check that out. It's like a castle tower. That's rad. That's not surprising. Yeah, you can see like, there was probably platform off of here and you can see where they had originally had stuff in the walls to support a stair, stairway or something going up. Big solid, big stones. Yeah, this is cool.
Lindsay. You got sun up there. I can't even tell where the campground's at from here. Like you can't you can't see any of that stuff from up here. There is a pond somewhere. You can't see that from up here. Yeah. Oh, you can kind of see the interstate down there. And then off in the distance over there, there's windmills everywhere, the generator windmills. But this is cool. Oh, you can see some over there and over there, just patches of windmills. I understand they're necessary. They don't exactly look the greatest covering the horizon. And this doesn't zoom in far enough for you guys to probably see any of that. They're way out there. Well, y'all, this is a rad spot. And I guess I showed you the name of the spot on the sign down there at the trailhead. So uh, if you want to come check it out, you can. Uh, so I came up there and you can see there's a couple of trails that go off. I think that's probably what this park is kind of known for is hiking trails and this observation tower. This is not the style of observation tower uh, that I expected to see. We've got a couple in Nebraska, but they're just metal, big metal towers to have this old tower here, old stone construction is really neat. But I'm going to get headed on down the road, y'all. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next adventure. I'll see you in a bit.